If I don't give up in the ring, I don't give up in life. If I'm patient in life, I'm patient in the ring. If I, um, if I give my 100% in the ring, I give my 100% in life. It's no different. I try to live my life the same way I train, the same way I fight. And um, when I fight, it's an expression of myself, not just a guy in there who is trying to go crazy, knock another guy out. This is an expression of my own feelings, my own commitment to the sport, and the way I live my life. That's, that's the way I feel uh, fighting is for me. My life is very much fighting and my family. That's it. I have no time for nothing else. I very much enjoy both of them. <laughs> so um, whenever I'm not fighting, I'm spending all my downtime with my wife and kids, traveling, doing fun things, making my kids laugh and smile, teaching them new things. And then uh, on the opposite end, I'm in, I'm in here. I'm sacrificing. I'm committing myself to something um, that I believe in. Both of them allow me to do the other. Uh, fighting allows me to spend time with downtime with my family, and my family uh, and my wife and what she does for me at home allows me to fight. Allows me to do this for a living. So without one, I can't have the other. I need both in order to uh, to be happy. The first time I fought Aoki, it was in, in Japan, and um, I was, I, don't, I didn't feel like I established myself yet as one of the top ranked fighters in the world, and I was still questioning my own, what I was capable of and my own, my own abilities, and um, I never respected leg locks in MMA, never understood how a leg lock can be used in MMA when a guy's slippery, and I felt like they weren't usable in MMA, so I didn't respect them enough, and um, because I didn't, I paid for it. <laughs> After that fight, I was so angry with myself, I felt like I wasn't even in a fight. I felt like I was cheated. I wasn't cheated. I lost fair and square, but I felt like I was cheated. I didn't get the sweat. I, I didn't even get the fight. I said, shit, man. This is, uh, there wasn't even a fight. He, he grabbed my leg, I, you know, and it was over. It's, I've been asking Bjorn to sign Aoki for two, three years now so I can get the rematch here in America and, and fight him again and, and kind of set the score even. <laughs> Eddie was the first big name I ever signed through Monty Cox. That was four years ago, and, you know, the contract was coming up to an end and Ed obviously wanted and needed a big win over Mike Chandler to try to put himself in position to negotiate with us and or negotiate with the UFC. Um, it didn't work out that way for him. And he asked me after the fight, he said, will you stand by what you said and get me the Shinya Aoki fight? I said, absolutely. I mean, Ed's been part and parcel of this organization since its kickoff. He's just got a heart and soul that just won't quit. He's a great human being. I love him and his family. So um, still made the fight. And it's a great fight for Ed because he's jumping out of the fire, out of the frying pan into the fire, but if he wins that fight, he reestablishes himself at an elite high level. We're at a different, way, way different spectrum now. We're three years later. I believe in myself. I know I'm the best lightweight in the world. I know what I'm capable of. Uh, I know the proper techniques to get out of certain moves. Um, I'm experienced. Uh, I'm a veteran of the sport. I fought some of the best guys in the world, and um, I think the biggest thing is my belief and, and knowing what I'm capable of doing, and uh, that'll be the deciding factor and what the reason I win this fight. And um, it's a way, way different scenario this time. put him into a fight, make him maybe think twice, make, break him mentally, 
and uh, give something to the fans that they may want to see. This is important to me, and I've and I've put my heart and soul into this training camp, and um, you know, everything that happens on Friday will be because of my hard work and uh, because of my commitment to uh, this fight. I came here about eight weeks ago. I've been uh, sharing my time between here and Philadelphia, but maybe 70% of my time has been here with uh, the coaches here and the, and the team here. And um, I never felt more ready uh, mentally, physically, and uh, never more focused for a fight. I feel like I feel like I sacrificed a lot. I feel like my, my wife and kids have sacrificed a lot. We haven't seen each other. Um, and I almost feel like I owe it to them to go out there and show them, you know, what I've been doing here every day when, when they're not around, so. I think keeping myself occupied keeps my mind off my family. So as long as I keep myself occupied, keep myself stimulated with something fight related, I can, I can cope better. Whenever I have downtime, like on Sunday when we have off, I kind of go nuts because I know that time I could be spending and hanging out with my wife and kids, but um, I just try to keep myself occupied and keep, keep my focus on the good things and the reason I'm here. We're only, uh, I think maybe like five or four days away from weigh-ins. Weigh-ins are Thursday, it's Monday, so we're gonna find some stuff to juice. I'm gonna get a lot of nutrients in me, just not a lot of weight. Yesterday we got to, um, they cooked Thai, Thai food. Coach Henry came over and his wife, and they cooked some Thai food for me, Max, Abel, and Matt, and Josh came over. It's like a, you know, small family. A lot of us are away from our family, uh, our kids, our wives, so we have to look uh, at each other for, uh, <laughs> for companionship. I look at fighting as more of a, like the art of deception, like uh, tricking a guy, making him maybe think one thing when I'm thinking the complete opposite. It's like a poker game. It's more of how can I get him to think I want to wrestle when I really want to strike? How do I, how do I get him to think I want to take him to the ground and do jiu-jitsu when really I want to stand? And I work on these things and I think about them and I work on transitioning to, um, to trick guys up and uh, I think I work on that more than I work on any one technique. I think uh, it's, that's the most important part of mixed martial arts is the ability to transition from one art to the other in a blink of an eye. That's the greatest thing about MMA. Um, it's perfections like unachievable. Um, that's what makes it so intriguing to me, to all the other fighters, is that it can't be perfected. 
that um, you can never learn enough. I feel like the majority of this sport is the way, the attitude we go about doing things, we go about doing the moves and the techniques, and the belief that we have in the moves and the techniques, and we go out there and, and believe in them and, and use them. So uh, I, I would say it's more 80% mental, 20% physical. Eddie! Yeah, I'm not it's a Freddy. hoorah guy, but uh, I'm from Philly and you guys welcome me right in, just like a family. I, I appreciate everything you guys did. and. Um, I had a great fucking time here and I'm ready to fight, so I yes. love you guys and the team and the coaches. So. Listen up, listen up, boys. Thank you, Eddie, for coming here. I think everybody feels the same way. You look, you really a truly, a true gentleman and a great fighter. That's what I'm looking for. That's how we're going life. Not to be great fighters. I think everyone here is a great fighter, but also to be a gentleman and a, a man of honor, man of respect. A lot of people say that we are, we are what we eat. But I say we are what we think. If you think, if you think you are a stupid asshole, you're gonna be an asshole. If you think you're a champion, you're gonna be a champion. So boys, remember, who we are, we are champions! This is my uh, last training session with the Black Zillions. I leave South Florida. Right now it's 12 o'clock. My plane leaves at five. So I'm gonna get a little bit more of a run in, try to get my weight down a little bit more. But uh, my last training session, and um, I feel awesome, man. The, the weight cut will go probably better than ever. And um, that's all it's about now, just stay focused, keep the game plan on my head, keep everything concentrated and um, get the weight, and then we go get paid, right? Of course, it's Bellator Petra, the former lightweight champion. Official weight is... 154 and a half for Eddie Alvarez! Eddie, you told us you've made a lot of changes in your personal and professional life. This fight is part of that. How much does this rematch mean to you tomorrow night? Uh, it's been a long time coming, and the first time we fought it was in Japan. This fight's in my country, in my cage, and it'll be my fight, so tune in. Check it out, guys. The rematch. Rematch the fans have been waiting for. I was hanging with people who, like, they would get tough when I went out. And they would want to fight, and um. But they didn't really want to fight. They wanted to end the fight. Yeah, and I would, I'd end up fighting a lot. I fought a lot, and um, I kept winning, even though it wasn't sanctioned or wasn't whatever. I get a lot of street fights, and I win and win and win. And I was with Jamie at the time, and I would keep dreaming about fighting. Like even when I didn't fight, but I, when I fight on the weekends, I would dream about different scenarios. Like, and I wake up and I tell her, I'd be like. Yeah, I had this weird dream. I was fighting, 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 and I was fighting just like it was just yeah. coming to me all the time. And I'm like, finally, I'm like, I need to get a hold of. I knew a group that was training. I I visited it like once or twice, uh, the Fight Factory. Yeah. And it was down in a basement. And um, I'm like, I need to get a hold of that guy again and see what they're doing. And I finally got a hold of him. Like, yo, man, I want to train. And. Uh, Eight months later, I took my first pro fight. The first fight, it wasn't like oh, I'm gonna fight for a little. It was nothing like that. It was like I paid. I had to pay the promoter money. I paid him the money. Um, I had to pay for my own medical, so I ended up like two or three hundred in the hole <laughs> after paying for my own medicals. I sold enough tickets to at least like make half my money back. And um, yeah, and I didn't get like. I feel like then too, like I, I got nervous, but like. Honestly, there was a point in my life that I felt like I was invincible. Like yeah. I didn't feel nervous. I'm like, I'm like, guys, gonna smash this dude. Like, yeah, you, you are. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I wasn't ever like, please, you know. And the first fight, I got wasted. I got on the wrong bus and everything to get there. <laughs> well, we used to bring like you know a hundred people to your fight, even there though it was a tiny is. little venue. We used to pack like a hundred people onto the yellow bus, and then and are, like, the uh, the other fighter the that you fought like... did the same thing. And after your fight, 
we all emptied out of the parking lot, got I on the two buses. That. Right as the two buses are about to pull away, two two guys start arguing or four guys start arguing in the parking lot. Both buses empty out and there's a massive fight in the parking lot. I know, I'm in the back and I'm jumping out. The, the back door goes yeah. swinging open. I'm jumping down the back door. My sisters were there and like Philly they don't know me fans. like as me as like Al. They know me as like my family me. Yeah. The light comes. Jam, are you okay? I'm like, oh, I'm fine. This is normal. <laughs> yeah. Fans in Philly are passionate about their uh, yeah. their athletes. I wasn't necessarily balanced as a person because I wasn't a father, I wasn't a husband. I was just a fighter. I had no time to even be a father and a husband because because of work and because of training. So um, I promised my wife, you know, I'll keep winning, keep winning, and eventually. I'll make enough money to just be able to fight, and that's when we'll be able to have have money, enjoy our life, get a house, and, and do things better. And we were blessed. I got a contract, and I was able to go to my wife and say, I'm done working, only training. You guys are the biggest fighting military set right here tonight, man. I said, I'll wait for that, bro. Kid me. I haven't fought in five and six months, and um, I'm, I'm blessed to be able to fight on Friday. I'm not fearful. I'm not worried. I don't care about a certain outcome or a certain thing that happens, a knockout or whatever. I could give a shit. I'm just happy and appreciate the chance to be able to go fight and um, do what I do best. So I'm um, very excited, very excited. I'm gonna shave the Japanese symbol for sleep into your head. We're about five hours away from our fight, so anything to kill time. Keep our mind uh, clear. You look good, you feel good. You feel good, you fight good. You fight good, you live good. So, in actuality, it all starts with the so. hair. I came to America to close the book on Eddie Alvarez. When this fight's done, he won't ever want to fight me again. This is a career-defining fight. Three years in the making between two of the best fighters in the world. Shinya Aoki is perhaps the cruelest fighter I've ever seen as far as submissions go. Eddie is a bad matchup for Shinya Yoki because he has the skill set to beat him. It's an issue of confidence. Big shots by Alvarez! The question he has to face is, was the Michael Chandler fight the turning point in his career? Can he rise above like a great fighter is supposed to? That's the question in this fight. There you see the former Bellator lightweight world champion, Eddie Alvarez. He lost his title last November, a fourth round submission defeat versus Michael Chandler and what I thought and many people thought was the fight of the year in 2011. That was also Alvarez's last time in an MMA cage. Jimmy, truly, this is now a crossroads fight for Eddie Alvarez. Yeah, he's made so many changes personally, professionally. This win means so much to him. He needs this victory. I'm completely empty in my head. No, no thoughts, no feelings. No thoughts of what he's going to do, what I'm going to do, what's, what's going to happen in the second round, third round. Maybe if, if he does this or I do that. The bell in round number one. How does Eddie Alvarez begin? He said, no thoughts. I just, no expectations, just fight, just react and let it happen naturally. No different than I live my life, the same. No expectations in my life. I don't think about, oh, gotta do this, gotta do that, what if this, what if that. Can't control any of that. I can only control what's right in front of me at the present time. 
And if that guy's in front of me at the present time and he's presenting me with a certain problem, I need to confront that problem then and there. I can't, I need to be focused. I can't think about what he did last time, what he might do later, only what he's doing now. Same exact way I, I try to live. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, the official time, two minutes, 14 seconds, into round number one, the winner by TKO, Eddie Alvarez. feels like I just took that backpack like it was full of rocks and I just threw it on the ground because the last couple months been rough for me man uh, financially everything's been bad like I'm not gonna lie it's been bad and um, I needed this it's not that I, I wanted this I needed it so thank God and um, uh, this sports crazy man I don't know what to say six months ago I took a big loss I fucking no money in the bank, nothing, and then I do this, so I'm, I'm, I can't be any more happy, so. See that? That's how I feel tonight. Let him know, like, look, I, you want to play that? I, I, I'm going to make you lose. You, 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 not scared. I went to Japan three years ago, and I, I fought Aoki for the first time, and uh, he got me. He got me that night. I was, I wasn't focused, and um, he was able to submit me pretty quickly, and uh, <clears throat> I, I just had a good night, and that's the way the sport goes. People look too far in the fights, and um, I just had a good night. And I want to thank Aoki and the, the Japanese pe people for uh, bringing him here and giving me a chance at fighting him again. He could have easily said no to this rematch. He beat me in about a minute and something. He could have said no, and it would have been justifiable. But he had the courage and the, and the respect for me to give me the rematch. 
actually, I think it's easy. If you fight Aoki, just don't fight with him in the ground. You have to avoid the ground game. If you, if you, if you exchange positions with him in, 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 a, in the ground, you're gonna probably you're gonna end up in a bad position. And what you don't want is to mess with this guy in the ground. So that's why we train to avoid his jiu-jitsu. <laughs> All right, when does fights never go like that? Like you think about them and you do them, you know, you're saying focus on the game plan, focus on it. They never go like that though. It always, you go in there and it's like four million other things happen before anything. You're not focused. Really? <laughs> it's because you're, you're not, not focused. focused. Damn, like When you are focused, you are focused. This is like, <laughs> it's not going to get any better. <laughs> A little bit of pie afterwards. I'm going to collect my win bonus. <laughs> I'm going to go home to Philadelphia. Me and my family are going to eat. <laughs> Eat well. Uh, we're gonna smile, laugh, and play. And um, and I'm not sure. All I know is that um, I'm gonna enjoy some downtime with my family. I deserve it. They deserve it. We deserve to be together. This isn't the safest of careers, you know? This is a very cutthroat career, very, very performance-based. We only get commissioned. So what we do is how we get paid. And you have to be a very strong person, have a, have a strong stomach, not a weak stomach. Be able to deal with lows and deal with highs and deal with, and, but, um, at the end of the day, I don't feel like there's any better way to live your life than to sacrifice and to maybe not know what is in the future. Maybe just hope and believe. Then, then you know you're living life to the fullest. So yeah, if every, all three of my kids, if they wanted to become fighters, I would more than welcome it. I'd welcome it with a smile on my face. But it wouldn't hurt me if one of them maybe wanted to play professional golf or something. <laughs>